right, welcome to today's video where we're going to be working on this Dodge Caravan. Uh, it's a, from a 2000 Dodge Caravan and it is a dead instrument cluster. Seems to be a pretty common problem with these, so figured it'd be worth doing a video on. Let's go ahead and power it up and see what happens. Well, nothing happens. As you can see, we're drawing zero amps. Let me move that so you can see. Yep. So we're not drawing any current at all. So clearly we have a problem with this. And yes, it is wired and plugged in in the back. So uh, let's get this thing apart and uh, see what's going on inside this board. Okay, so what you're gonna need to take this apart is a uh, T15 screwdriver. So got my T15 right here and let's flip this thing over. And they did my favorite thing that auto manufacturers do, used cardboard as a backing. Like what purpose does this serve other than to attract cockroaches into your car? And as you can see, this one had some cockroaches in it. All right. Okay, so um, if you've seen any of the other videos on this, because the whole reason why I'm making this video is I realized it was common enough to make a video on. Um, most of the guys take out all the bulbs when they take it apart. There's no need to do that. These bulbs are not attached to the plastic. They're just on the circuit board, so just leave them on there. Um, so we have more T15 screws all around here. If you are familiar with this channel and familiar with the 99-02 GM instrument clusters, you would know that um, they use a chip in them that looks kind of like this to control the trans temp on there. But GM is notorious for putting their own part number on existing off the shelf parts. If anyone has one of these instrument clusters as a junk one and could pull one of these chips off, I would love to uh, check and see if this is actually the same chip that GM was using under a proprietary part number. So it'd be great to know so that way people could know the off the shelf part number and replace them themselves to get replacement parts. So again, if you have one of these and would be willing to pull one of these chips off to send to me, uh, that would be greatly appreciated for doing uh, a little investigation on. And by the way, you would normally need to take this screw out, but that cardboard was dissolved, so... Okay, that's all there is to getting it out. Your uh, air core motors stay in there, and so does your LCD screen. So now we have it apart. So I'm going to zoom in real quick because it's uh, pretty obvious what the problem is with this instrument cluster, other than all the roach turds all over it. All right, so it's clear as day. You can see it. Let me grab my tweezers so I can point it out. Uh, but that is a seriously cracked solder joint right there. I don't even have to bust out the microscope for you guys. That one is absolutely clear as day. Okay, so let's go ahead and just put some flux on all of these and just reflow that whole connector even though it's definitely just the one pin that's the problem. Man, that's gross. Look at all those roach turds inside this thing. So, yep, we'll go ahead and take care of that. Okay, so 
uh, now we got it pretty much cleaned off. Just gonna visually inspect it again and make sure we don't have any cracked solder joints around the microcontroller. And then those uh, those chips that I was asking if anyone has any, these are all the air core drivers. So, you know, if, if one of them's not working, just follow the traces to which one's controlled by which, and uh, we can verify that. While I got it here, why don't we just take a look real quick and see. Um, this one is just a junk board from the 99 to 02 uh, trucks. And let's see if the pins at least match for it going. So let's see, the IC goes this way on here and it goes the opposite way on there. So Okay, so I have them oriented the same where pin one is over here. So that's pin one and this one would be pin one over here and the four the so these four pins here go to driving the air core so those four just like that and it's the same case with this one these four drive the air core and then these three are ground and these three also appear to be ground on this so yeah i'm pretty confident that uh, this particular chip is the exact same one that GM used, uh, just GM put their proprietary part number on it. So again, if anyone has one of these that they wouldn't mind sending me one of these chips off of, I, I'd really appreciate that. That way I can uh, test it out on one of these and see if it actually works uh, to, to verify that that is in fact uh, the same chip. Um, because it's always great to figure out what people's proprietary part number is when they're just putting a part number on there to hide what they're using and make it more difficult uh, for repair and not actually... Uh, it, it, that's, that's the only purpose of doing that is to make repair more difficult and to uh, maybe help prevent some intellectual property theft, but I, I don't think you're really preventing any in that case. So... Let's get this back on here. Just got to push these back down against the um, there, so that way the springs seat them. And then put back on the T15s. We're just going to put two of them on real quick and then we're going to test it. And yes, clearly somebody had been in this before me by all the paint on it, the paint pen. It's all over the thing. It's like graffiti almost. All right, let's see here. Let me get this back. This is just uh, the pin out for it. So, yeah, that's that. Okay. Okay, so welcome back a week later. Um, almost a week later. It was the 23rd or so when I started recording this, and it's now the 28th. Um, so... Uh, what I've discovered in this rebuild was that the caravan requires a signal from the ECM to wake up the instrument cluster or else it doesn't wake all the way up. Um, so when we were testing it on the bench, pulled zero amps, which meant there was something wrong with it. it. It should have still been pulling some current with that key signal and everything on there. But since it had that cracked ground, uh, it didn't work. Um, so it, it was a dead cluster needed repair. Uh, then bench testing it afterwards, uh, it would just pull about 0.65 amps um, and it would pull the stepper motor, well the air core motor, sorry, all the way uh, down. Now it would go down whichever direction down was the closest. So if it was like sitting at 60 uh, miles an hour, it would pull it down to like 120 and if it was sitting at like say 40 miles an hour and pull it down to zero so just something to be aware of it just it pulls it down <laughs> but not a specific down um so so yeah the the uh air core motors pull down the vfd screens don't come on and it pulls about uh 6.5 amps uh sorry <laughs> 0.65 amps um at 14 volts so uh, that's just kind of what to look for when it's when it's working properly on the bench without a uh, ECM. Uh, so I asked the Facebook group, I was like, hey, I got this instrument cluster. I really don't want to take it back to the mechanic and see if it's working. Um, 
<laughs> what's going on here? Why can't I get it to power up? Uh, and they answered my question. You know, they came in and were like, hey, you definitely need the ECM. Uh, and so, yeah, we had two, two guys came in with the correct answer that it needs an ECM. So I was like, cool. Well, it definitely seems to be working. So I took it back to the mechanic and there were no problems. Obviously, that doesn't make for a great video of on my workbench of it just like eh, not doing anything. So uh, that's what's going on there. Uh, so I definitely recommend joining the Facebook group because there's a whole lot more knowledge in that Facebook group than I have uh, that can help answer your questions on whatever you're working on. So uh, definitely recommend the Facebook group. Um, I do try to keep out uh, some of the like just complete DIYers that aren't even trying to learn that it's just like, oh, I got this one problem I want to fix and then I'm never going to contribute again to the group. Uh, we'll, we'll filter you out of the group eventually. Uh, but anybody that's there to learn and wants to share what they're learning and, and experience it, welcome to join the group. The questions are pretty simple answers, like what's an X25 stepper motor or X27? Um, is that X27 is the answer to one of the questions, so making it easy for you guys. Uh, so just check down the description. You'll see the link to the Facebook group. All right, so... That's really about it I have for this video. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is I'm going to be doing probably a live stream repair of some of these, which are the Xceiver boards. Uh, so XCVR, it's a receiver and transmitter um, uh, board for the uh, PMD2 uh, train cabinets. So I'll probably just do a live stream of those. I have, uh, uh, yeah, five of them. Uh, five of them prepped for repair. Uh, they all have the same problem, uh, just a transistor that goes out on them pretty commonly. So I'll be putting them back together, testing them, looking for other various problems they may have. Uh, so I should do that this week. It's probably just going to be a live stream. Um, I may do a recorded video, but I think I'm just going to do a live stream on that. I haven't done one in a while, so that's kind of the interest in doing a live stream. Um, so look for that probably Wednesday of this week, um, may, maybe earlier. If I do a recorded video though, it'll probably be Friday or so before it's up. So, uh, just something to be on the lookout for. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Uh, it was fun doing, you know, kind of a random repair that I normally don't do, uh, on the bench here. Uh, it's, and you should see more of this on the channel because I'm working for a mechanic on, on those kind of things. So a local mechanic basically feeding me um, all the stuff that he can't figure out. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying doing those. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll uh, see you in the next one.